Hello everybody and welcome to the ninth video in our series of videos on political developments in Irish history in the 20th century. So last time we looked at the planning of the 1916 rising going pretty pear-shaped and the leaders of the rebellion deciding that they would continue the rising even with little to no hope of success. So today we're going to look at the actual rising itself and the immediate aftermath of it. As always, you have your learning outcomes, so by the end of this video, you guys should know three facts about the rising, you guys should know uh, three reasons why it failed, and you guys should know the major consequence of the rising. So with the planned rising for Easter Sunday in tatters after the arrest of casements with the arms from Germany and Owen McNeil's countermanding order, uh, the organisers of the rebellion uh, decided that they would still stage the rebellion the next day on Easter Monday. So who took part in the rising? Um, there was about uh, 15,000 Irish volunteers from the IV IVF and they decided to take part in the rising. There were about uh, 300 men in James Connolly's Irish Citizen Army and they took part. There were also the members of the IRB and funny there were also female participants in the rising from the organisation Common them on. Podrick Pierce and James Connolly uh, took the GPO on O'Connell Street, a very famous building on O'Connell Street, uh, which at the time was known as Sackville Street. Um, Pierce stood in front of the GPO and he read out the 1916 uh, proclamation declaring Ireland a republic. It was signed by the six members of the IRB Military Council who we met before, Podrick Pierce, Tom Clark, Sean McDermott, Joseph Plunkett, Eamon Kant, Thomas McDonough, and also it was signed by the leader of the ICA, the man who met in the 1930 lockout, James Connolly. Uh, the crowd gathered in front of the uh, GPO was quite bewildered and slightly confused as to what was going on. Um, but the rebels uh, came, they took several key uh, sites around the city, they took the GPO as you can see there, they took the four courts, and they took uh, Jacob's uh, biscuit factory. Um, but the main issue was not the places they took, but the places that they failed to take. They failed to take Dublin Castle, which was the British headquarters where the Chief Secretary operated from. They also failed to take Trinity, which was a really well-located site, but it, and it was also, funnily enough, for a university, it was stacked with arms. But probably the main failure was this, their, their failure to take the train lines into Dublin or the ports. So when the British started shipping troops into Dublin, they weren't impeded by the rebels. Uh, the British government was initially taken by surprise, but on Monday afternoon, reinforcements were brought in from the Curra. They weren't stopped because the train lines weren't taken. And by Wednesday, extra troops arrived from England. Again, the ports were open so they could land safely. And along with the Helga gunboat, uh, which uh, sailed up to Liffey and began shelling the GPO. The rebels had been counting the days of the Republic. Monday was day one, Tuesday was two, day two, but by day six, Saturday, uh, the rebels decided to surrender. The city laid in ruins. The rebels had spent the week under siege, being shot at and having shells rained down them, on them, and, and they largely just defended their positions with rifle and sniper fire uh, and improvised explosives as well. So Pierce, um, Podrick Pierce, surrendered unconditionally, saying that in order to prevent the further slaughter of Dublin citizens in the hope of saving the lives of our followers, now surrounded and hopelessly outnumbered. So why did the, the rising fail? It can seem quite obvious, but there are four things we can kind of point to. We can obviously point out that they were outnumbered by the British Army, and they didn't have the 10,000 Irish volunteers that could have been there on Easter Sunday, uh, and also they didn't um, take key positions. Uh, the people, second thing, the people of Dublin didn't support the rising, so there wasn't a, a mass rising. The people were pretty unhappy with the destruction and the destruction of their city. Uh, the third point as to why the rising failed, it was only in Dublin. So the British concentrated their troops there and were able to put down the rising quite quickly. And the fourth one, as I uh, alluded to, um, they didn't take the key positions such as um, uh, Trinity College, uh, the train lines, most importantly, and the, the ports. 
In total, uh, nearly 500 people died, uh, about 300 of those were civilians, 64 were rebels, and about 130 were RIC soldiers or, or police op uh, RIC police officers, sorry, or British uh, soldiers. However, even though uh, the rising was a complete military failure, the British handling of the aftermath made the rising's goal of being a blood sacrifice an absolute success. British executed 16 people. This is a small number for the damage caused and for staging a rebellion. However, they staggered the executions and with each passing day, the public opinion turned against the British. All seven of the men who signed the proclamation were executed in Kilmainham jail, um, including James Connolly, who had been injured in the fire in the GPO and he was unable to stand, so he was tied to a chair to face the firing squad. Eight others were killed, uh, including uh, Sam Houston and a Wexford man called Michael O'Hanrahan and Roger Casement, who tried to bring in the uh, guns from Germany. He was the last to be killed. He was hung for treason in August of 1916. However, the consequence, the big consequence of the rising is that these executions were crucial in awakening the Irish desire for independence and turning them against the British and their promised home rule. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. So you guys should know three facts about the rising, when it took place, some of the buildings they took, some of the buildings they didn't take, how long it lasted, uh, and some of the leaders uh, who took part. You guys should know three reasons why it failed. Uh, as outlined above, they were outnumbered by the British Army. The people didn't support the rising in Dublin. Uh, it was only in Dublin, so the British could concentrate their, their troops there and they didn't take key positions. Uh, finally, you guys should know the major consequence of the rising, which was the awakening of the Irish desire for independence and turning popular opinion against the British and towards the rebels. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys got something useful from this video.